Hey Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles Now. And today, let's get to the latest Eagle news and rumors here because, as always, seeming like every single week we have more stuff to break down regarding the Philadelphia Eagles. Some really interesting stuff today. We'll start with Doug Peterson and his job security. We've talked a lot about different Eagles and their potential job securities in 2021. Howie Roseman, Carson Wentz, and of course, Doug Peterson. And I've said, I mean, for the past couple of weeks, Doug Peterson deserves to stay. I'll explain more of that here in just a second. But Doug Peterson was finally asked about his job security by some members of the media this week, and he gave, to me, some pretty interesting answers. What's interesting about the whole thing is, even though Doug Peterson is technically signed through 2021, the Eagles themselves, like AKA owner Jeffrey Lurie, has not come out and said, Doug's job is safe. And normally at this point in the season, if there was any sort of question or concern and, Doug, and how he was like, no, 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 he's, he's coming back, he would have announced it by now saying, guys, you're dumb, Doug Peterson for sure coming back. But they have not. And so I'm kind of wondering when they're going to confirm that Doug is going to stay. And the longer it takes, the more worried I get they could let Doug Peterson, a Super Bowl winning head coach who's been in the playoffs three years in a row, minus this year, just walk away after one bad season. Crazy stuff. Here's what Doug said. And he was asked about it, quote, listen, I don't. I feel fully confident to be the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles in 2021. The thing that I'm most proud of with this football team, we've been in the postseason three of the last five years since I've been here, and that's pretty good. We won a championship here. We've gone through a season where a lot of our veteran guys are not playing due to injury, and we're playing with a lot of young players. Listen, keeping Doug is an absolute no-brainer. I don't understand why there are a lot of people who want Doug Peterson fired. Has Doug Peterson, or does Doug Peterson deserve a lot of the blame this year? Yes, 100%. I think his play calling got a little bad. I think his coaching of Carson Wentz hasn't been that great. There are reports that he was kind of lenient with Wentz, and the whole team was lenient with, with Wentz with some uh, errors and mistakes in training camp. That's on Doug Peterson. But I think Doug Peterson understands that. Plus, as Doug has said, and he said it not in that quote, but in a different one, he's been on three Super Bowl winning teams. He's won three Super Bowls, not just being a head coach, but also you know going back to his time with the Green Bay Packers. This is a winning guy. This guy knows how to win. He knows how to build teams. We got to remember, if Alshon Jeffrey catches the pass against the Saints in 2018, they go to back-to-back -back NFC title games, which is ridiculous in modern NFL times. I mean, like, literally since the Eagles did it back in like 04, 05, or 04, 03, whenever the Super Bowl year was, you see, teams just don't do that. And then of course, the chance there with Carson Wentz to go and win his first playoff game last year. If he doesn't get knocked out of that one, I think he has a real, or, I mean, the Eagles have a real chance of beating Seattle and at least going to the divisional round for three straight years in a row. I understand the frustration with Doug Peterson this year, but firing him to me solves absolutely no issues. Just going to hire a guy with less experience and less championship experience, and that pays off when the Eagles inevitably make another championship run, or at least another playoff run, hopefully as soon as 2021. Like I said, he is signed through 2022, so maybe they're just being quiet about him coming back because obviously he's going to come back next year. But one thing that I did take from the Doug Peterson press conference yesterday he was asked how he would fix the Eagles. Like, what, what, what would Doug do? And Doug kind of talked about how, you know, he needs some better players in here and needs some better scouting. He kind of took some shots at Howie Roseman. But he just essentially went back to the basics and said this, quote, I just know we've got to get back to the fundamentals, back to the basics. Having a, uh, having a missed offseason, we've got, to get, we've got to get back to that. We've got to get back to teaching the basics and fundamentals and having OTAs and having practice. Of course, you remember, due to the, co uh, the pandemic and COVID-19, every single team in the National Football League had zero OTAs and very little shortened training camp and no preseason. And we can't make that as the sole excuse for the Eagles. But with being a very young football team, at least with the young and new talent they brought in this offseason, especially in the draft, those guys just didn't seem to get ready to play. And I think ho the hope is people like Jalen Rager and other wide receivers and other young players in general, Kayvon Wallace, Sean Bradley, Davion Taylor, will all have more of an offseason to show that they were indeed good picks in the 2020 NFL draft. Quick prep qu a qu question here. Go down below to the pinned comment. Let's just solve this once and for all. We'll ask this one more time. Do you want Doug back in 2021? Simple answer, yes or no. Like, simple. I don't, I don't need a whole you know essay on why you want him to come back or not. Just simple. Do you want him back in 2021? Why for yes and for no? My, uh, my uh, take here is yes, 100%. Okay, so a lot of people have been asking me, Thomas, what must the Eagles do to get the best possible draft pick they potentially can have in the 2021 NFL draft? What do we need to do? What needs to have, what has to happen on in this Sunday in order for Philadelphia to secure that top pick and hopefully get one of the best players in the NFL draft, which hopefully they are able to do? So first off, if you guys didn't see this, the Eagles-Washington game has been flexed to Sunday Night Football, which is uber depressing. We have to watch our terrible Eagles play in prime time. We kind of are hoping that they lose. So we have to watch them lose in prime time for all to see. Honestly... Uh, if the Eagles would have won against Dallas, then this game of Sunday football would have been a winner-take-all. A lot more fun, but that didn't happen, so we move on. The Eagles can pick can pick no higher than number three. It's the best possible place they can be. The Jags are locked in at one. The Jets are locked in at two. And so winning on Sunday 
it helps nobody. Like, it literally helps the Eagles zero. It does nothing for Philadelphia. So for me, I, I'm, I'm against tanking, and I don't think you should lose intentionally, but please don't win. Like, they really need to lose on Sunday. Drop a like if you guys agree. Like, they need to lose on Sunday to secure that top pick because we all want to have the number three overall pick, which should be... I mean, honestly, pretty uh, pretty cool. So here's your top six as they sand. Jags, Jets locked in. The Dolphins are there at number three. That's via the Houston Texans. Falcons, Bengals, and then the Eagles sit there at number six. You guys know this. We've talked about this. The question is, what has to happen on Sunday in order for Philly to go from six up to three? Well, I'm glad you asked. First off, Philly must lose to Washington. If they beat Washington and everybody else loses, and the Eagles could even fall as close to 10 or 11, but hopefully that's not the case. The Bengals would need to beat Baltimore. That is... That, to me, is very unlikely because the, uh, the I think the Ravens have to win and then they're in the postseason, so I don't see that happening. Maybe, though. Falcons have to beat Tampa Bay, which to me is the most likely of the scenarios that are happening right here because Atlanta at least has talent and can, at times, show up against football teams. And Tampa Bay is locked into the playoffs, even though Bruce Arians said they're going to play the starters on Sunday, so who knows. And the Texans beat Tennessee because, again, the Texans pick is the picket there at number four right now. It's just the Dolphins have it via the trades because the Texans are dumb and traded all of their draft picks. So Texans beat Tennessee, which after Sean Watson, anything is possible. So if all four of those things happen, Philadelphia will have the number three overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft. Now, why does number three matter? And I'm not, this is not just a, well, you can get the best player there at number three. Duh, we know that. What's more important and why number three is extremely important is the draft pick points chart. I talked about this last year. Essentially, in the National Football League, every single team bases their draft off of the points chart. So each pick is worth X amount of points. I'll give you an example here on my screen. The first overall pick is worth 3,000 points, the most points out of any pick. And then it gets progressively worse as you go down. So the third pick is worth 2,200 points, and the sixth pick is worth 1,600. Tenth is 1,300. Fourteenth is 1,100. You see how it goes. When you get to draft day trades and when you're shopping picks and trying to move up and down in the NFL draft, the majority of trades are made based off of the points chart. So people can say, okay, you want to offer me the third overall pick for pick you know, six and then pick 17, they add up the points that each pick is worth, and then they compare those two numbers to see if the pick is overall worth it. If the Eagles were able to get the number three overall pick versus, let's say, the number six overall pick, the number three overall pick is almost double as important as the number six pick. It's crazy how it works, but it's true. And if you sit there at number three, you not only get your pick of basically any player in the draft, because Lawrence will go one, probably a tackle will go number two, and then everybody else is available at three, or which would become my uh, thought process here, trade back. Not crazy far, but trade back enough to pick up a bunch of picks. Look what it costs. The Eagles showed what it cost a couple of years ago when they traded up for Carson Wentz. The Eagles got number two overall at 2017 fifth, and the Browns got eight overall, 77 overall, 100 overall, another first the year after, and a 2018 second. That is a massive haul. If you're telling me Philadelphia could go from three back down to, let's say, eight. Lions are at eight right now. Lions may come up for a quarterback or go to, to I think, like seven or wherever Atlanta ends up. If Atlanta were to win, like seven or eight. And you're saying you get, you only fall back five spots, like three to eight. You get an extra second, an extra third, an extra first in the in the following year, and then another third or whatever in the year after that. That's a great haul. And you can still get one of the best players in the draft inside the top 10 at 6, 7, 8. I mean, Waddle, Devontae Smith, Micah Parsons. They won't all be gone. One of them will fall into your lap. And we all assume that the majority of those four, you know, Jamar Chase and Parsons and Smith and uh, and, and Jillian Waddle are all going to be really good players. And so you take the best available. You have extra picks. It's a win-win-win situation. So that's why it's so important they lose on Sunday. I'm honestly rooting so hard for them to lose. If they win, it'll be a sad, sad day and a sad way to end the season because you're going to ruin your chance at a very high draft pick and a very lucrative not only draft in 2021, but future draft going forward. Based on all of that, you guys should answer this question with a 100% affirmation, a big yes. Should the Eagles trade back? Duh, like 100% they should trade back. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Maybe you want the best player available at three, which... It's your, it's your choice. I'll read the comments. Before we keep going, quick shout out to BetUS and their deals to get you guys into sports betting because a lot of people want to do it but don't know which website and don't know exactly how to do it. We got you guys covered here. Chatsports.com forward slash Eagles bet. Go there, put your deposit down, use Eagles, uh, the promo code Eagles125 on your deposit of $100 or more, and you will get a 125% deposit bonus. That's the 125 part of the promo code, which will, of course, give you even more money to go ahead and bet on the playoffs or bet on upcoming college basketball or the NBA or whatever you guys want to bet on. It's a one-stop shop, a great website. I use it every week for my betting. You guys should, too. Chatsports.com forward slash Eagles bet. Promo code is Eagles125. Final thoughts here on Sunday, quick injury report look, and really more of a look at why the Eagles should sit people on Sunday in a game that is completely meaningless if they win. 
First off, the first injury report came out yesterday. They're all expected to be healthy. Some of those uh, guys we'll get into in a second on Sunday night. But I think the Eagles should. I don't think they will, but I think they should sit some of their better players. That way, one, you guarantee a loss. And two, you keep the trade assets healthy because you're going to have to make some moves this offseason to get under the cap. So Zach Berman has this tweet giving you an update on all the injuries. First off, Jordan Mailata still in concussion protocol based on that helmet-to-helmet. Someone considered cheap hit by Jalen Smith in Dallas on Sunday. Derek Barnett, he's supposed to play play this week. Fletcher Cox is kind of dealing with that stinger. He's kind of day-to-day. I hope he doesn't play on Sunday because I don't want Fletcher to get hurt. Sean Bradley day-to-day, and there's a chance that Davion Taylor comes back. He's been out the past couple of weeks. So there's your injury report, but my thought process on this is sit the guys you potentially could be trading in the offseason. That way they don't get hurt and become completely irrelevant and unable to be traded. So I don't want to see Deshaun Jackson. He might not play, but Deshaun Jackson could t- potentially be a trade candidate or a cut candidate this offseason. Carson Wentz, now he's going to be the backup, most likely. I don't think he's going to play anyway, but I would not put Carson Wentz in there even if you had a scenario where Jalen Hurts got hurt because if Wentz gets hurt, then you cannot trade him. Also, Derek Barnett, apparently he's going to play this week, but Barnett is possibly a trade candidate. Why would you risk him getting injured and being and having to pay him $10.5 million in his, 20, uh, his fifth-year option from the rookie deal? And finally, Zach Ertz. I don't want to trade Zach Ertz, but Zach Ertz becomes a big key trade asset. And so if you need to get rid of him to free up cap space, don't let him play and have the chance to get hurt, therefore having to keep him. Sit any key trade assets you possibly could have right now because, like I said, this game does not matter, and we really need to lose it. you got to remember back to the trade deadline, Philadelphia was trying to trade Zach Ertz. We reported that and talked about the rumors here on this channel, but they were unable to because he was currently on the three-game IR due to an injury. They could have gotten rid of Zach Ertz, which would have been controversial, but it would have saved them a ton of money towards their cap hell situation in 2021. And so don't have a repeat of that because when the new league year starts, trades could be flying pre-June 1st, and we could see a lot of moves happening in Philadelphia to not only get them better, but also free up cap space for the future of the organization. Just my two cents. I don't think they will send anybody because people want to play, so it's probably, it's probably not going to happen. But they should, and I warned you first if one of them gets hurt and then we cannot trade them. Okay, before we go ahead and end, make sure you guys are subscribed because I'm telling you, it's going to be a crazy offseason. It's going to be probably the craziest offseason Philadelphia has had in the past five years. Let's just say that. It's going to be nuts. Since the Carson Wentz trade-up in the draft, which is like five years ago now, it's going to be nuts this year. So make sure you guys are subscribed. We'll cover it all here. Your one-stop shop on YouTube, the Philadelphia Eagles Now YouTube channel. Ultimately, I have for today here at Philadelphia Eagles Now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Signing off. Hope you guys have a happy new year. Enjoy the rest of your day.